Welcome back to PlagueSci Studios, everyone. Today, we're gonna to be taking a look at another product by heavy metal mad scientist, Mike Fortin, a noise gate called the Zool. Now I would consider myself a guitar gear nerd, but the types of products that I actually get excited about are fairly limited in scope. Um, I get excited about guitars, I get excited about high gain amplifiers, overdrives, cabinets, the kind of stuff that allow me to get a cool high gain sound. The stuff that I don't really get excited about is all the other effects and technicalities you have to have to get that sound to work. Um, chief among those are noise gates. So when I tell you that I've been checking my email about every hour for the past three days to wait for this pedal to come in, you better believe this is a special noise gate pedal. Looking past the monochrome graphics, you'll instantly see a few key differences between this pedal and some of the more prominent noise gates on the market. First of all, it's a one knob operation, which is a bit unusual. Uh, second of all though, is that it has three jacks, not two, not four, and we'll certainly get into why momentarily. Most of the time there are one of two ways or a combination of those two ways to use a noise gate in your signal chain. The first of which is to put it in front of your amplifier's preamp. And what that will allow you to do is tighten up the response of your guitar. So anything that falls under a certain decibel level, usually you'll set that on the noise gate itself. And of course you can, you know, most of the time select the attack and decay times if it is built into the pedal. Um, and, you know, like I said, that'll tighten up your rhythm sound, but you'll still be getting noise anywhere downstream of that signal chain. So if you have a really high gain amp, you got the input gain cranked on that thing. It doesn't matter if you have your noise gate engaged, you're still going to get noise coming out of that through your cabinet. And that's no big deal because you can take the noise gate and run it within the effects loop. But now you no longer have that tight guitar response. And playing with the timings, it still won't give you exactly what you had before while being able to silence a noisy preamp. So what a lot of prominent noise gates out there do is allow you to run it both in front of and in the effects loop of the amplifier. And in my opinion, it's kind of a brute force way to do it, but it does work. Um, the reason I'm not a huge fan of other noise gate pedals, and there's plenty of them out there on the market that work wonders, um, is they're just a little complex, honestly. You can fiddle and play with the knobs and you can never, at least in my experience, get the perfect attack and perfect decay for all types of playing. Especially when you switch to your clean channel, most of the time you just gotta bypass them completely. The Zool's method, on the other hand, is one of the most elegant solutions I've ever seen in a guitar noise gate pedal. So the top quarter inch jacks, you would run this in the effects loop of your amplifier, as you might expect but the side jack is actually what's called a key indicator. And what this does is basically tells the pedal, I'm playing my guitar. In order to achieve that though, you have to have at least one other pedal that can split your signal into two ways. One which will go into the Zool, and the other which will go into the front of your amplifier. And of course you can have your overdrives and all that good stuff in between. And if I had to give any criticism at all to this pedal, it would probably be that. I wish that you know, we could have had a bypass, that way you have the key indicator, bypass out, and then you can just go into your overdrives without needing something like a buffer pedal or a tuner pedal. But I imagine a lot of you already have that sitting around, and if you don't, they're really not that expensive. Um, it just would have been a nice to have for an over $200 noise gate pedal. But um, I really can't complain too much because the results are absolutely fantastic. So basically what happens is that when you play your guitar and you set the threshold of noise, on the pedal itself. It says, hey, I'm playing and don't stop until we get to this threshold of decibel level. And then once it does on your clean guitar, mind you, then it will shut off everything. And that means it doesn't matter if you're playing with no overdrive or if you have 15 fuzz pedals and three boss metal zones lined up at the same time, it's gonna squash it because it all depends on what's coming from the source your guitar.
The absolute killer side effect of this design is that when you switch to your amp's clean channel, you don't have to bypass the Zool, you don't have to mess with any knobs, nothing, because it's all dependent on your clean guitar signal. And that's something that I've never experienced on any analog noise gate pedal before. Because of that, the Zool is the best kind of set it and forget it pedal, and it's honestly the only noise gate that I could wholeheartedly recommend to players of any genre, whether it be completely clean, crunch, or earth shattering high gain metal. In short, I actually don't have a whole lot to say about the Zool. What little I do have to say is almost entirely positive though. The only bit of criticism I could say is that there's no bypass on the key indicator, you know, that way you don't have to split your signal, but I'm sure there was a problem in terms of the circuit design that made that impossible or else it would probably be there. It's also expensive because it's a Mike Fortin handmade pedal, but if you've already paid 200 plus bucks for a clean boost um, or the grind, which is very similar to the 33 pedal, then you probably won't bat an eye at a $200 plus noise gate. Um, if those prices seem absurd, this video and this product is probably not for you. Overall though, I am blown away by this pedal's transparency, the studio quality you get in this form factor, the flexibility with any setup, and I honestly cannot imagine playing through a real tube amp anymore without this in the signal chain. You will have to pry this from my cold dead hands if you want me to stop using this pedal. It is awesome. So if you already have a high gain amplifier and you use other Fortin pedals like the 33 or the Grind to drive said high gain amplifier, you'll wanna have one of these in the signal chain, believe me. So yeah, um, highly recommended for those of you that uh, can stomach the price point. And otherwise, I hope this type of you know, key signaling catches on throughout the market if it's you know, not copyrighted or something of that sort because it is a really cool way of doing it. So yeah, that'll be about that. Any questions, please leave them below as always. And hopefully we'll see you soon on more product reviews. Thanks for watching. Bye.